with the man himself, Mr. Dean White, my co-host. How you doing, bruv? All good. Yeah. We'd like to welcome uh, back again, Mr. O.D. O'Hara Davis. How you doing, bruv? Back again, man. I see you going around interviewing all of my enemies, but it's fine. You know. <laughs> <laughs> all your enemies. Fine. Yeah. Hey, the man coming with the smoke ASAP. Jump from Straight right away. On. Listen, I see him interviewing... I seen him come up to me, interview me. What do you think about Taylor's last fight? And then I said something bad, and then he'd go down to Taylor and say, oh, how are they said this about your last fight? What you got to say back? And then he put that in a title. But it's okay. Hey, hey. <laughs> you, you know man's got to be buying them groceries, man, you know? It's all about the groceries, man. Put them in the fridge. I mean, got to make... controversy sells, man, so it's all good. It does. Clickbait. Clickbait. It does. But you know what? If they say anything bad about me next time, if you can, if you can cut that part out, and just put what I say about them, the best things I say about them. <laughs> mad, <laughs> mad, mad. So, look, last time we spoke, I think we were deep in uh, lockdown. Uh, mm -hmm. Not much was going on, but it would seem like brighter days are ahead now. It seems like boxing, boxing's return is back now. Mm -hmm. And uh, boxing on, on these shores is on the horizon. How you feeling, champ? Same old, same old. You know, I fought in Peb anyway, so as soon as lockdown happened, I thought, a few weeks earlier, so I was fine. So, but we're looking okay. at the finals happening in um, late August, early September. So, I've been back in the gym anyway. You know, I, I had a few weeks off, um, and then I got straight back in the gym. So, now I just got to get into camp now. It'd be peace, it should be easy work for me. Piece of, piece of cake, yeah. You mentioned cake now. Have mm -hmm. you been indulging a bit of cake to make 150 pounds for Andy Fowler? Listen, Andy Fowler. <laughs> You know what they do? They like to bluff. I feel like I feel like I feel like they use me. I feel like they come online talking all this shit, making a Zoom call, making a, like a press conference. They said, and since then I haven't heard anything from them. I've heard nothing. There's been no phone call, no text about a fight. There's been no like, no terms agreed. There's been no contract sent. I said to them, I'll go up to 150 pound and I'll come to your own backyard and I'll knock you out in front of your own fans. I made it easy for them. I made it, I made it easy. And they feel like I'm just online talking. I'm a talker. I'm like, let's make it happen. Let's let's make it happen. I'll go up by 10 pound. But they like to talk because obviously since that thing that they got done, you know, it's like, it's like they put it on their page and they got and like they got all their views. And since then, I haven't I haven't heard from them. So I feel like Eddie Hearn used me. I feel like I feel like I feel like they <laughs> used me to get their name or to get Andy Fowler's name out of there. Now he's fighting some bum, Adam Harper. Who the fuck's Adam Harper? Have you heard of him? <laughs> nope. hey, uh, uh, who the yeah. fuck is this guy? Adam Adam um his name Adam Harper. Like he's I think that he's got about six fights. He's won six and he's lost one. The guy's a bum, journeyman. No one. Come on, uh, man. And uh, who's that? Anthony Fowler's fighting him. Yeah, and uh, yeah, and fighting fight of some bum in his next fight. He's got six wins, mm. all by points. Ain't no, yeah, you know I mean, all by points. Each of his six wins is all been by points, and he's got beat once. The guy's a bum. The guy's a bum. And Eddie Hearn spoke a good talk about let's make this fight happen. He spoke a lot of shit. Eddie Hearn used me the same way as he used me, and then he threw me under the bus. The same way he used me again to try and promote Andy Fanner's name. Because he got beat because because he fought that guy. What's his name? Got Fitzgerald and he got oh, beat. Fitzgerald, and, yeah, yeah. And obviously, since then, Andy Fowler's day has gone from here right down there, and then he wants to use this beef with me to bring his name up to here. But he used me again, and I'm mad. Eddie Hearn's got to pay. <laughs> yeah, I watched that press conference and uh, it was hilarious, man. Uh, I was expecting today um, the olive oil, you know, oh. to be in shop. No, I'm not really on that no more because I feel like. The hype's all done now. The hype's done now. Like, there's like, there's like, there ain't gonna be no fight. I'm not about this internet beef. I'm about, I'm about fighting. Everyone that I've ever had beef with online, I fought them. Derry Matthews, Taylor, um, and 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 a few other names. Everyone that I've ever had beef with online, I've been like, let's fight. I'm not, I'm not on this clout thing. I'm on fighting. That's where I'm from. I'm from the streets. If if if, if you have to, if you have an issue, you have to fight. I told them, I I don't mind going up. Ten pound, and I'll go to your hometown just to fight you. The guys are bummed. The guys what about fucking internet had getting views and trying to look good, and then fighting a bum. Man, fuck those people, man. Wow. Dean, was you looking forward to that Fowler versus O'Hara? You know what? 
I, I think I spoke about it a bit. I, I get it in terms of like, obviously, it's a decent fight. Obviously, I don't know. It's for me. I just like, you know, obviously, Ohara, you're on your own path already. Mm. For me, I just feel like you should just concentrate on your thing and try and clean up your little division. But sometimes, you know, sometimes you get you get you get called out. People try and um, draw you out still. And um, like sometimes it, it makes sense. Obviously, if you're not fighting at the, the, the full weight of 154, then it might work out because obviously you're going to be playing into his size because he's actually a big, big, big 154. Yeah. So I don't even think he'd make 150, truth be told. Um, so it's just one of them, you know what I mean? But sometimes if it makes dollars, it makes sense, you know? And I think in, in, in this system, instant hit probably would make decent money it would get decent traction um but are, are, are you in that competition or uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah so uh, yeah that's what i'm thinking so i think you've got a few things to deal with really so you know maybe just concentrate on that and see how it goes man but yeah i'm still concentrating on that i'm still going to win this fight but i'm just thinking in the future this is a fight that can always it can always happen and and yeah, i didn't yeah. i never started this beat it was done i responded so I'm not so I'm not starting nothing, but they brought this whole thing up and they said let's fight. So now I'm like let's fight, and now they're like no nah, no fight. Concentrate on your thing. I'm like don't fucking call me out then, and then say and and then tell me concentrate on my thing. Don't call me out, you mug. And if I <laughs> so you, you mentioned Eddie Hearn, how he threw you under the bus. Yeah. Prior to that e press conference, did you have a conversation about you yeah. know, old ground? And I did, and then he took it out. He took it out. <laughs> As soon as it, as soon as I came on, the first thing I said was, I said to him, Eddie, guess what? He said, what? I said, I'm back from under the bus. You threw me under the bus and you thought I was done, that my boxing career is done. I'm not going to be anything. But look, yeah, but look, I'm back. I've showed you. I don't need Matt True and I don't need you to get where I'm going to get to. And he took that part out, out of it because you knew that I got him. <laughs> he took it out. Wow. What was that on? What did you have? A, a Zoom a Zoom call or what did you have? Yeah, yeah, it was on it was on Zoom. Oh interesting, interesting man. I, but I add a part in. I wanted to add a, I wanted to add a part in. He threw me under the bus, he thought I wasn't gonna be anything. He threw me under the bus for no reason at all, but I'm back. I'm back. So you, you guys buried a hatchet or is it just is it straight is it still smoke? Listen, it's still smoke. If I see it you're enrolled, listen man. <laughs> <laughs> Keep your hands up, Eddie. If I see you out on the streets, hold your hands up. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, no, I'm joking. Man, man's from Hackney. Man's from Hackney, yeah. No, I'm joking. But listen, man. Eddie Hearn threw me under the bus, man. Man, I feel like, I feel like, I feel like we got on quite good before that. I actually liked him. Like, you know what I mean, I'll be going up to match him office every now and again, and we'll sit down, we'll have a talk about life, and we'll bust joking that. And then one day, just threw me under the bus. Show me, you know what, OD? Even though I acted like your friend. Even though I acted like I was in your best interest, I don't give a toss about you. I don't give a flying fuck about you. The first thing went wrong, I'm going to be looking at Tony Bellew, I'm going to lick his ass. All those fans up in Liverpool, I'm going to lick their asses and I'm going to throw you under the bus. Why? Because I've never given a fuck about you. But he acted like he was my friend. It's mad. Oh. And you know what? Yeah. And then after that, I left Matchroom. I never got, I never got kicked out. How it went down, me and Frank Vaughan was in talks and then Eddie Hearn heard about the talks. Eddie Hearn phoned me, offered me a free fight deal. The first fight was going to be on the Hey Bellu 2 card. The next fight was going to be on the Dillian White on the card when he fought against Parker, was it? Mm, it was Parker 2, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was either, yeah, it, it was either Dillian White show first and then Hey Bellu or Hey Bellu and Dillian White. I forgot who fought first. And then the first fight ended the year. Eddie Hearn offered me a free fight deal, sent me like my fight first is it was quite okay and then he sent me a, a text and then he phoned me you know what you know what i feel like i feel like i feel, I feel like i made you who you are sky sports made you and you joined us and we made you the fact that you are and, and it'll be a shame and like to see you go so i'm offering you a free fight deal if you want to join frank that's cool i'm offering you a free fight deal you know what i've done i chose frank the next day eddie hung eddie hung come on fight out and it was like you know what I feel like I had to let Ahara go because he wasn't fitting the image. I'm like, you fucking liar. You fucking liar. And he lied. He lied. Making it seem as if I got kicked out. I never got kicked out. I left Matchroom and I went to Frank Warren. But I feel like it hurts him because he's like, we are Matchroom. No one leaves us. Nah, I left you. Carl Frampton left you. Warrington left you. 
Charlie Edwards left. You know what? We all went to Frank Warren after we left him. And that probably and that's what hurts him. Oh. I'm still, to this day. To this day, I'm still mad. <laughs> and how, how, who did, and, and, and how did you feel um when you was went to Warren? Do you feel you was accepted a little bit better? Yeah, when I went to Frank Warren, like I remember when I met Frank, like one of the first things that he said was if you was I was gonna throw you under the bus. That's when I was like, okay, cool, I'm sold. I'm sold. Tell me my fight purses. Tell me when I'm when I'm gonna fight and I'm done. I'm sold. As long as I, what I wanted to hear was if it was me, I was gonna throw you under the bus. I was like, sweet mate, I like you. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Frank's cool people, man. I feel like I spent, I spent, I spent so many years. I spent all of my boxing career hearing bad things about Frank Warren, from Frank to pay to Frank sign a deal before you go out to fight. He's gonna make you sign a thing. As you're backstage, he's gonna make you take off your gloves. Then I heard he's gonna pay you, but he's gonna pay you six months or a year after the fight. I heard all these things, and I heard, uh, well, you're not gonna get any fights when you're with Frank. You know, he's gonna promise you dates, and, and it's not gonna happen. And and they all proved false. Frank, I got treated well. I got paid on time. I got paid well. I got paid like I like the right amount, and I got the three fights that we agreed with on that same year. There was nothing wrong with Frank Warren. I feel like everyone lied about Frank Warren because they had yeah, I think I, I think I'll echo that. I, I think even for myself, being in the sport, I had a perception of him based on everyone else's perception, mm. and it was exactly what you're saying. Uh, is this? It was a lot of negativity. He doesn't mm. pay. He doesn't this. Yeah. yeah. And um, on me meeting him and dealing with him, yeah. You know, I, I you know I haven't got anything bad to say. I think you know I've had a quite a decent relationship with him, and he, and he seems quite straightforward in what he says. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um. So, but um, you know, it's just one of them. I guess I think it's down to the individual as well. There's obviously different things, and sometimes people don't know the relationships people people's had, and why things have gone sour with that individual because it's happened there's a few occasions i've heard things happen but we don't know the ins and outs of why it's gone like that you mm. know what i mean but um on your case in my case i feel like you know i'd second what you said and i feel like you know they seem to be doing their thing you know what i mean yeah 100 percent. thanks a good guy man cool people all right what, what would you say is the difference between eddie hernan and so, Frank so what made you go to um mtk then what made me go to mtk I was looking at their, tr- I was looking at like the, uh, like the track record that MTK have, that I'm like they signed all of these guys in the past, and I haven't heard anyone That's... say anything bad about MTK. I haven't, I haven't seen anyone leave MTK and say, no, oh, if I could turn time back, I wouldn't have signed to MTK or MTK. I didn't get treated good at MTK or MTK is this, MTK is that. I haven't heard a single bad thing said about MTK, and I was quite desperate at the time, but now looking back, it was the best choice that I've made. The best, it was literally the best thing that I've done, getting signed to NTK. You know, I get treated well, I get treated good. They're honest guys, straightforward. And if I could turn time back, I would have signed to NTK. I would have done the same thing. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have changed anything. Yeah, amazing. That's good to hear. Yeah. So, would you say that in your experience, you've had um, better dealings with Frank Warren and Eddie Hearn, or do they both have their strengths and weaknesses? Or, I mean, how is it for you? Yeah, they both got their strengths and weaknesses, really. They both, yeah, they both got their strengths and weaknesses. Like when Frank Warren, like, like, no, nah, like to fight on a matchroom show, because if you if, if if you think about it, Frank Warren and like this thing that he's got, BT Sport, that like, they're still new in the game. BT Sport, they've only been there for quite a few years. So the shows that I fought on weren't as hyped up as the matching shows. It wasn't as hyped up and, you know, the lights and the music between rounds and, you know, that many pe- that many people there as they as there was on a matching show. And that and like it's like like it's like the production, the promotion, BC Sport are still a bit behind Sky Sports. But I feel like in time, we are gonna get there. What have you made of the what you made of the uh, artificial noise in football? Would you think that would work in boxing? Nah, it's bullshit, man. Ain't <laughs> that, mate, ain't that I like real fans. Having real fans there is the best thing ever. I just want to hear someone say, nah, I want to hear, knock out that cunt, Tyrone McKenna. Knock out that cunt. If I ain't hearing that, I want to hear no noise. <laughs> the only noise I want to hear is knock that motherfucker out. If they ain't got that thing saying that, listen, leave it. 
when it, when, are you, when are you meant to fight again, sir? Uh, end of August, early September sometime. Okay, yeah, you did kind of mention that, actually. Sorry yeah. about that, yeah. So it's, it's the final with uh, McKenna. Okay, yeah. yeah. In some ways, would it would it have been, like, ideal preparation? Well, sorry. In some ways, would it be ideal preparation to fight McKenna, then Fowler? Because McKenna is kind of like a big 140-pound fighter anyway. You know what I mean? It's just kind of getting you ready for maybe a potential fantasy fight with um, Anthony Fowler. Just, you know what? I'm from the streets, man. I don't give a fuck, man. I'll take it. Fowler. <laughs> beard gang. Beard gang. I don't care who's first. Yeah. You know what? I've got a beard now. A man now, I've got the beard and everything. I mean, <laughs> you know, I, honestly, even I, Dean's on the beard gang as well at the moment, man. Dean's on the beard yeah. gang as well, man. No rough thing, you get me? You know, I honestly don't care who's first, McKenna, Annie Fowler. To me, a fight is a fight. And that's how I'm going to say, you know, in the past of my boxing career, I was more, who's the ref going to be, who's this, who's that, be all tactical. Yeah, I need to be tactical, but right now, I don't give a toss. Get me a fight. Any of those motherfuckers, I don't like them both, so I want them both. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't care who's, I don't care who's first. Would you make of that poster that I saw on Twitter the other day? It's got, it's got Frank Warren against Eddie Hearn. Mm -hmm. It's got Dubois against Dillian White, and it's yeah. got Martin Fury against AJ. And a lot of people were specula speculating about whose side is stronger. I mean, what's your opinion? You know what, the heavyweights. Daniel Dubois, Dillian White, AJ, Tyson Fury. I'm friends with them all. I know them all. So, and because I know them all, they've all helped me out in my boxing career. I don't, I don't, I don't know. As long as I, I don't know. And I don't want to say anything to offend anyone. So I just leave that to them, really. Uh, this, this, is the, this is the newer horror, man, for real, man. <laughs> but you know what? You know what? Yeah, I, com yeah. I commentated on that, that post, what they put up. I think it's quite mm. ridiculous to put not being funny, if you put in Daniel Dubois, he's a great, great young talent. He's a great prospect coming up. I just feel like if you look at his resume, it's just not good enough. I'm very sorry. Obviously, he's learning. Look, if you put Joe Joyce in there, from the resume he's got, I could I, I could hear an argument. He's faced a very a lot of good fighters, you know what I'm saying? But Daniel Dubois is still young and he hasn't faced anyone. If we're going back, we're going to look at Larty and nearly knocked him out. So I'm not being funny. Sorry to say, like, you know, he's got a lot of learning to do. You get know what I'm trying to say? Mm -hmm. So um, he's big, he's strong, he can punch. Can he take uh, Can he take a punch? He, I guess he can because he took that one from Larty, but Larty wobbled him. He recovered and he got him out of there. But I just feel like those boys on the other side at the minute got way too much experience for him at this juncture. But if he catches anyone on the whiskers... They, you know, they could go, but I think the experience in them was, it's not going to be just that easy. They're not going to sit in front of him like Larty did and try and get tagged on the chin. Does he take them kind of left hooks to the chin, what Dylan's giving out? Does he take the body shots, what Dylan's delivering? Not too sure. Yeah. You know, so it's a bit of a tricky one. I think the AJ that's there now that went and beat um, Andrew Ruiz the other day, does uh, Daniel Dubois go out there and beat him? He, he's obviously thinking a lot more. He's moving a lot more. He's, he's not so robotic. There's loads of things that go. And then what you got to understand is he kind of has a lot of... Sh he, he, he's got he's got that rawness in him, Daniel Dubois, sometimes. He, you know, like in terms of like that inexperience. Like he'll have a shootout when it's not necessary. The, the boys with experience will, you know, go for a walk, take their time a little bit more. You know what I mean? You know, like the early days, maybe when Dylan was in there or Joshua was in there, they'll swing a lot of shots and they're mm -hmm. not getting the geeks out of there. And then, they, you know, they keep just doing the same thing. But as they gained more experience, they became a little bit more calculative. You know what I mean? I think he's lacking that. He's got that big um, punching power. But at the same time, look, even against Fuzzy Moto, he was getting caught in there with shots against Fuzzy Moto. You know what I mean? So uh, with the big boys, you know, if he gets caught on the chin, what, what happens? Uh, how does he How does he uh, deal with that? He's never been dropped. So he's not dealt with adversity from getting off the, ca the counter. He, he's been buzzed, so I guess he's dealt with that. Um, he's never done 12 rounds. You know, like little things that the experienced guys have got. But like I said, he is a definite great talent. I think if, obviously, if he waits down the line a little bit more, you know, everyone's got to start literally, you know, looking to the corner of their eye and take, paying a little bit more respect and notice to what he's doing. But listen, he's got a big fight with Joe Joyce. But Joe Joyce, you know, obviously he's someone whose who's resume is very good. He's strong. He's the juggernaut. He, he, the only thing is, 
you know, he gets hit quite a lot as well. If he keeps his head off the line, I, I think it'd be an interesting fight. He's actually got to get past the juggernaut force first before talking about Dillian White and this man and that man and Joshua. It's a bit disrespectful slightly, but hey, it's not him. He's just there. I know he just goes in there. He's not in no one bag of talking. And I like the kid, you know what I mean? But I think it's a little bit disrespectful when you start doing that because Dillian faced a lot of top lads and had big nights in boxing. And um, the boy hasn't done that as yet. So I think maybe I'd, I'd have preferred to say Fury and Joe Jose over there because I'd say that because of, you know, Brian Jennings and the other guys um, that Joe Joyce has faced. So, I, you know, I wouldn't even put the boy in there. I'd put him as one of the top, top prospects, yes. But I wouldn't put him in the elite, elite level just yet. You know what I mean? Mm. Would you say that, uh, Haro, that if um, to bar beats Joyce, that he's certified? Is he certified? If he beats Joyce. Then again, it will still be a way to go before before he's got as many names as what either AJ's got or what, or what Dillian White's got. Look at who AJ's for. Look at who's things for. If you look at Dillian White, if you look at who, if you look at who they fought, they fought countless names, names, names. And I feel like Joe Joyce will be the first name or the first big name that's on, that's on, yeah. that's on Daniel DeBar's list. So I feel like even if he does get past this fight, he's still got a way to go before he gets his name as big as a Dillian White or as an AJ. Talent wise, we're not sure yet. Like we're not sure who, who, who can beat who until it happens. I can't say Dillian White could be Daniel the Bart or AJ could be Daniel the Bart or, or, or that or that Daniel thing could beat them because we're just not sure until it, until it happens. But when you look at names and you look at who's fought who, Dillian White, AJ, they fought bigger names than him. Right. Well, what you got to look at also, sorry to cut, is even if he beats Joe Joyce, remember Joe Joyce was only about to fight Marco Hook for the European title. So that shows that he's only at European level, if you get my meaning. Mm. AJ is a world champion, Dylan's interim world champion, and he's fought consistently world title contenders. So mm. it's quite rude when you're saying someone who's just won like the British or the Commonwealth that oh he's on the same level. It's kind of it's a bit mad when people people like toss this world level thing around and jump to stuff. I heard someone talking about the um sniper, you know, um Lerone Richardson. Richardson talking about it the other day because he was saying he's world level and Sadiq was like, Hey, god damn it, show me this world level you at. You know what I mean? That's a, and that's a great that's a great fight there that's being made as well with those two boys. What's your thoughts on that actually? Let's ch- change in the subject. Sorry. Um, hey, that fight, you know what? If you asked me before Uma's last fight, I would have said and and I'm good mates with them both. I know Uma well. I know Uma more well than I know all these guys. So mm-hmm. if you if you are in this before Uma's last fight, I would have said that Uma's Ain't gonna win. I would have said there ain't no way Uma can win. But after that last fight that he done, Uma shocked me. I told him as a friend, I was like, Uma, you know that last fight? Do you know how you wasn't meant to win? I, I said to him, you was brought in there to get beat, to get your ass whooped, to get stopped, mm-hmm. and you won. Listen, Uma fought class in that fight, and I said to him, if you can fight every fight like that, if you can get in that same shape, and you can fight every fight like that, you can, mate, you can get to the top. Mm-hmm. But if, if if you look at if, if you look at Richards, he's also good. He's calm, calculated, smart, sharp. I feel like it's a 50-50 fight. I feel like it's a 50-50 fight. Because they're both amazing guys. Yeah, they're, they're both amazing fighters. Great fighters. And, the, and they can both get far in this game. Mm, and, uh, I, definitely, I definitely hear you. I thought the same. I thought that Cody might be too big, too strong, and outclass him and out-hustle him. But... He done amazing. I, uh, funny enough, I spoke to him on the phone the other day, actually, Umar, and I uh, was saying the same thing. He came through that. And obviously, I think that puts him in good position to coming into this fight. For me, Ron Richards, very classy. I think, what's he got? He's British Commonwealth and WBO European champion, right? Uh-huh. Yeah, so, you know, he's, he's, he's literally just under world level for real slightly. Uh-huh. Um, but he, he, he's very skillful, um, classy, but he just doesn't have the killer instinct. You know what I mean? I think he lacks... That mm-hmm. killer instinct in, uh, and bringing certain gears. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. He floats like a butterfly, stings like a bee. But I mean, <laughs> you know what I mean? So I think like, um, let's see what Uma, Uma brings that aggressive. He's going to come forward. He's going to let him have it. He's going to let his hands go. And I wonder how that bodes for a 12 round fight because we saw in the fight with uh, Lerone Richardson against, is it Clark something from Burnham up that way? Clark, yeah. Um, that, 
that guy put out a good game plan. He started going to the body from early round and Lerone faded later on in the fight. And that guy came way steaming back into the fight, you know? So it's definitely an interesting fight. It's definitely a 50-50 fight. Obviously, we, you know, you, you might want to even give the, the champion, I'd say I'd give the champion a little bit more of an edge, just slightly ever so. Not much, but, you know, if someone said 55-45, I, I wouldn't argue. If someone said 50-50, I wouldn't argue with that either, but just because he's got all the belts and he's the champion, you'd say, well, you know, but I think Omar's in a great place. And I think, you know, of coming off that win there, I think it's gonna, his ego, his confidence is going to be oozing and he's mm -hmm. going to try and go in there and, and upset the apple cart again. Yeah, I think, I think so. I feel like if you look at, if, if you look at, if, if you look at, if you look at Umar, Umar's fast, aggressive, awkward, wild, if you look at Richards, he's more cool, calm, calculated, and I feel like both of their styles are gonna gel so well. And I feel like it's yeah, I feel like it's gonna gel so well. But you don't know who's got the edge until after round two. You have to watch two, three rounds of the fight, and and then you'll be like, okay, cool, this guy's got the edge. But you've got to see two, three rounds first. Guys, on another topic, um, the breaking news about Big Baby, Jarrell Miller, failing another drug test, or horror. Would you make it all that? Mate, he's a fat cunt, man. Haha, <laughs> juicy! <laughs> Mate, he's a fat cunt. How you fail two tests? Not once, twice. Three, yeah. Three times. Mate, you're a fat cunt. He's a cunt, man. He needs to be out of this game. Wasting everyone's time. It was like, at first, it was go like it was meant to fight against AJ and get a few million pounds. The guy messed up. Are you taking all those drugs and you're still that fat? That's what I don't understand. How are you taking all those drugs? Steroid, you be taking Ethan, injecting himself up and he's still that fat. How? The guy's an arsehole, man. I, I don't know him. Like He ain't done anything bad to me. But the fact that he failed a test twice, that just angers me. The guy's a cunt, man. The guy's a, guy's a cunt and his boxing career. It shouldn't continue. It should be banned for life now. Because if he failed it twice and he can still box again, everyone else is going to start thinking, you know what, I'm going to start taking enhancement drugs, I'm going to be taking steroids, I'm going to pop myself up with this shit, putting all these different things in their arm, in their back, in their leg, all these different kind of needles. And it's, and, it's, and it's wrong. And there ain't no place for that in boxing. I feel like it's boxing license to be taken away from him as a punishment and as a lesson to other fighters, up and coming boxers, so that they know, because mate, I won't lie. If he gets a pass, listen, I might start thinking some shit. I might, I might, <laughs> I might start thinking some shit. I might sit down and be like, well, you know, he felt it twice. He, well, he felt it three times in his back. You know what? I'm gonna see what this little needle here does with that little powder. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's <laughs> it's, if, he's, if he comes back, if he comes back and he fights again, I, I won't lie. I'm gonna start thinking some shit. I'm, I'm gonna <laughs> go on research. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna start. I won't lie. And that's not just me. My man's mad, you know. And I said, you know, the, the maddest thing, though, obviously, America, um, American boards are different to the UK. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's why maybe he's just trying to chance it or what, because he's got popped for the same thing he got popped for the last time. It's kind of ridiculous that you don't even make it to your fight date and get your fight out of the way. It's, it's just crazy. Literally, just come off it. Um, and then he's he's got popped before the show's even commenced. It's kind of mad. I don't know. But listen, I don't know what Goldfrey said. What I do know is I know, obviously, Povetkin got done twice and came back in quite a short space of time. And there's a few other fighters in America, you know. So I think when it comes to them being um, suspended or something, you know, if it's um, Nevada or the, the New York State Commission or whatever it is, I think they're different to here because over here, they're not playing. Two mm. years, four years, eight years, done. Game's over. You know the yeah. ones? Yeah. Over there, them, them boys will pop regular probably and, you know, be back in a year's time or so. Yeah. Look at look at Canelo. Canelo, how, he was only out for four months. Yeah. That's yeah. like, all he's done, he done was a training camp and then he was back fighting again, you know? So, yeah. so, one of them, but I just feel like, I don't even know what to say, man. There's not even much words. I think what we need to do is pretend like he's not, um, visible and just make him disappear and just brush him under the carpet because we're just wasting valuable time and energy on uh 
on this 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 bad apple man. I don't know what's going on. He's really silly. Yep. Like you said, he's he's lost a lot of lot of money in purses mm -hmm. by being a silly sop. That's true. And, and you know what gets me mad is that the whole talk about AJ, AJ, your mum, I'm gonna take your mum out, I'm gonna knock you out. And it's quite believable because it's like it's like the way that he talks and and like he and, and like he believes himself so much, whereas everyone else this and they're like, wow, this guy might actually do something to AJ. <laughs> and then, yes. And then this next fight again, he's back, he's like, okay, guys, I'm sorry, I messed up, I'm going to hold my hand up. And then you fail it again. There ain't no excuse now, man. There ain't no excuse, mate, ain't, ain't no excuse. Like I said, if he comes back, if he can fight again, I'm going to start thinking some shit. I'm going to start seeing a few needles on the ground and start thinking, I wonder what's, what, what this thing does. <laughs> does. Or some power. It is, it's just man, it's mad. They just, they just need to throw um, Miller in the trash and be done with him. You know what I'm saying? You, you're right, man. You don't need to. You don't need to follow that. And that guy, let him live his life if he wants to. You're doing your thing, don't you know? It's true, yeah. I know. Yeah. But, but Dina, I remember you saying um, a little while back that you know it was a bit suspect that such a big man could throw you know that many punches. The, the volume of shots, yeah. And that was remember that was before. I was mm. saying, like, oh, a man who's over 300 pounds can throw the amount of volume of shots he does per round for 12 rounds. It's astronomical, you know? But, I mean, hey, listen, it's all come out in the wash. It is what it is. We know what it is. Um, Whatever that GW something he was taking, they said it kind of gives you that kind of endurance and stamina kind of element. So, I guess maybe he's unconfident of going out there performing without any form of uh, um, sub substance in his body. Someone, someone made a claim. They said some funny shit like they found traces of weed in his urine. <laughs> you know, like because there's normally no traces there. It's always traces of fucking anabolic or something. <laughs> I mean, so, I mean, people make some funny comments. You know, that was funny. There's traces of weed in there. You know, like oh, that is so dumb. But this guy, yeah, the man's just always um, juice up to the gills, mate. But hey, listen, let's see what they do, man. Hopefully, they throw the real book at him. You know. Mm -hmm. For real. And so it's not a case of before, because I remember Jerome Miller saying that, um, you know, the, the, the biceps and the, the physique was from um, hard work and um, cheeseburgers. That's not the case, no? That's what allowed him to eat them cheeseburgers. That's why he was fat, but he, he didn't get any fat because he's on that shit. <laughs> yeah. Mad. Just, just to conclude before we out, um, based on obviously the Pete the Peds that he's been caught taking, would he have been indestructible against um, uh, the elite fighters? Um, obviously, he was going to fight AJ, and he was obviously fa he failed. He was guilty. Um, would he have been a bit too much based on, you know, you know what he was um, taking um, at the time? I think he still would have got his ass whooped, but instead of getting knocked out in round three, he would have got knocked out in round seven, round eight, maybe. Would have saved him quite a few rounds, but he still would have got his ass whooped. He weren't that great. What do you reckon, dude? No, I reckon, um, obviously, in terms of like his fitness, obviously, when you fight different people, there's going to be nerves, there's going to be different factors. You're going to have to think a lot more when you fight elite, more elite fighters, isn't it? So it's a different game plan now when you go in there. When you go up there with someone with um, equal or better skill set than yourself, you know, he, you know, you might not get too much nerves, but you're going to have to think. And if you've got to think, that's going to tire you as well because obviously it's like chess in it. You're going to have to think what they're going to do or, you know, this or that. Or And is is his stamina going to hold up to it? But that, that for me, would have been something maybe that obviously he might have had um, some form of an advantage because obviously, you know, sometimes deal ties in it later round, but he still goes, even Joshua tired later in the round and he still goes. So would that have, but then the thing is for me, he's not a big puncher. I was thinking, would he be able to take their power punches um, and how would he survive in a fight? You know what I mean? But I, I think he'd end up losing the same like what Harahara said anyway. But it would have been interesting to see. Wow. Yeah. Well, that about wraps it up. I'd like to uh, thank Ohara Davis for coming on a No Permits podcast. My guy Dean White in the building, Pep Talk UK. Make sure you subscribe. Big up, Ohara. Cool, man. <laughs>